So I've lived with the name Visa Cash App RB since its official announcement, renaming the team once known as Alpha Tauri, Toro Rosso and Minardi. And to be honest with you, it still doesn't sit very well at all. Just like a toothache, you hope it's going to get better and sort itself out, but no, you're just going to eventually have to deal with it. To be honest, I was kind of hoping the team would kind of treat this as a publicity stunt, launching the most godforsaken team name in the world and get everyone talking and riled up and get attention, all that sort of stuff, which they would then backpedal from and rename the team Visa Scuderia. RB or something like that. Still a pretty crap name, but not as crap as what we could have had. And to top it off, the shortened name that's being thrown around at the moment is VCarb. VCarb. VCarb which is just disgusting. <laughs> the name on its own Visa Cash App RB sounds like a scam or something. If you got that appearing in your email inbox, you'd be a bit worried. But pitching VCarb as an improvement just shows how bad things really are. So it looks like Visa Cash App RB is here to stay for the time being. And as fans, I think we're all kind of thinking the same thing, where the team haven't done anything against the rules as such. It's just against the general agreed and accepted code of the sport when it comes to team names. Are we at a point now where a new team name has to be vetted and approved by someone? Does F1 need to have a crackdown on kind of silly fly-by-night purely marketing and commercial team names, which potentially kind of harm the integrity of the sports a little bit. But something that is slightly concerning is that the shockwaves and the hubbub from the team rename will die down and we will eventually become comfortable naming the team whatever it wants to be called because that's what always happens a big thing happens in f1 everyone's all worked up about it but then it dies down because this other thing over here has happened and then we all get worked up about that and then eventually that dies down as well when red bull bought jaguar everyone was thinking myself included that's a drinks company you can, how can you name an f1 team that name that will never ever work and here we are in 2024 and red bull rolls off the tongue in f1 conversations just so easily it's like they've always been there i guess what red bull kind of taught us is that you can name your team something pretty outlandish but it doesn't if as long as the team is successful then whatever you name the team doesn't really matter which is why i think as bad as it is visa cash app rb will ultimately be accepted regrettably potentially against our will but it will just kind of make everyone fall into line but this whole thing of a team name is this the hill i want to die on no do i care about the success of the team kind of. I have more important things to worry about and this is why this team is going to just blend in and it will just eventually become accepted. Now the thing is I've watched F1 for long enough to know that pretty much everything and everyone has a price and is up for sale. And it's been like that on an ever increasing scale pretty much since day one except for team names. Not ownership of a team where the team would be named of that of the owners is just the actual physical name of the team itself. Now the kind of default setting or the way it used to be was that the name of the team was that of the person who owned it and they would be held accountable for everything that happened. But more importantly, they believed in what they were doing so much and took so much pride in it that they were happy to put their name on it and accept the risk that comes with it. And with this method, we still have a few of the older teams knocking around today, such as Ferrari and McLaren and Williams and Sauber to a degree, and then some newer ones like Haas, and then hopefully sometime in the future, Andretti as well. Teams named after one person because they were happy to front up the cash and the will to do it. And over time, the team names get surrounded by things like title sponsors and engine supplies, but overall, the name itself was sacred because it was the F1 team that was running the operation and paying the bills. And some might say that this is when F1 lost its soul, but you know what? Things like wind tunnels, active suspensions, motorhomes and private jets aren't gonna pay for themselves. It's just another step in F1's development as a sport and as a commercial entity as well. But the question seems to be, where do we draw the line? Because because for the last few years, Sauber was called Alfa Romeo, but it was still Sauber kind of running the operation. But we accepted it because Alfa Romeo is a great brand, it has a great motorsport heritage, so it checks out. To put what Alfa Tauri have done with Visa and Cash Up in other terms would be kind of like if Haas did a deal with Nickelodeon and renamed the team Paw Patrol. And retiring from third on the final lap is Nico Hülkenberg in his MoneyGram Paw Patrol, powered by Ferrari. It just doesn't work, and nor should it, because some things can't just be bought and sold to everybody. Well, obviously they kind of can, but whether the fan base and public will accept it is another thing. Now, when Doralton Capital bought Williams, they could have very easily renamed the team Doralton Racing or Doralton Formula One team, and 
that kind of would, would have been it. You know, for all we know, that might have been discussed at one point. But fortunately, they knew the value of the Williams name and the brand that they were sitting on. They had a fast track VIP pass to the hearts and minds of Formula One fans. They get all the benefits of current and future ownership, plus the heritage of Frank Williams as well. Whereas had they rebranded Williams to Doralton Racing, they would have to start from scratch in terms of getting people on board. And that would probably prove ultimately to take too long and to be far too expensive as well. Minardi may have been kind of too much of a stretch, but had Alpha Tauri just rebranded straight back to Toro Rosso, I think fans would have absolutely have lapped it up as it is just a solid, solid team name to get behind. But no, I think it's kind of clear that the objective here was to disrupt and annoy and piss off the entire F1 community at this stage. I have a feeling that those who oversaw the renaming of Alpha Tauri don't really have much interest in Formula One themselves or the team's heritage itself going all the way back to Minardi and kind of just saw this as a great big fat commission check. Because if it doesn't work out, what do they care? They'll just move on to the next thing to ruin. In fact, you can see this all firsthand. If you go onto the Visa Cash App RB LinkedIn page and have a look at some posts about the rebrand, you can see all these tools commenting on it saying, oh, it's a great rebrand and oh, what a fantastic direction and great opportunity for growth and all these things like that. Absolutely talking out of their asses. But what a lot of folks at the F1 commercial board level don't realize or tend to forget sometimes is that F1 F1 fans, we're nerdy as hell, we remember everything, and we don't forget. Take a big fancy blue chip company like Mastercard who once had a crack at F1, and what will F1 fans see? Just an annoying company that single-handedly wrecked the F1 chances of an established racing car company with its own incompetence and playing a big part in their ultimate demise. I'm talking about the whole Mastercard Lola thing, by the way. It's a great, great thing to read about if you haven't already. But something that's gonna be intriguing to see is if this rebrand is a success, Will it lead more teams to follow suits? Because what will help the acceptance of the name is a quick car. And because of the team's ties to Red Bull, closer ties to Red Bull this year, it looks like the car might actually be pretty good. Definitely an improvement over what they had in 2023. And I'm sure guys like Williams, Sauber and Haas are all quite worried about this. Alpine are probably even concerned as well. And again, does F1 need to step in here and draw the line under what actually qualifies as a customer car? Well. We'll have to look at that another day. And having Snowder and Ricardo as your lineup isn't bad either. It's actually, I think, one of the better lineups on the grid. So solid driver lineup, decent car, and increased money from the sponsorship coming in. It looks like they might actually have a good package. I mean, right now, money talks in F1 so much that when you think back to 1999, when BAR attempted to run two separate liveries at the same time, this was not against the rules. It was just exploiting a loophole, but F1 stepped in and banned it to protect the sport's integrity. Had that never happened and a team tried to do this today, I think it would be accepted because the governing body and the ownership and everything just see dollar signs at the end of the day. But what would be really interesting to see is if any of this hubbub with this team name change is mentioned in the eventual season seven of Netflix's Drive to Survive or Drive Without Gunther as it should be called. Will they say it as it was or will they just brush over it and say that everyone was applauding like they do in North Korea? That's certainly what LinkedIn would have you believe right now anyway. Now I'd love to see what Danny Rick and Yuki Snowder have to say about the team name and everything but in their minds it's probably as long as the car goes fast they don't care and as fans we should probably adopt the same sorts of thing but when it it's your employer compared to your hobby, you have a very, very different mentality. And something that's a huge factor is when the livery is launched on February the 8th, and judging that the teasers that we've seen so far is very much a blue and green affair, I'm getting real Honda Earth Dreams vibes from 2007. And look, whilst this is probably top of the league in terms of worst team names ever, F1, I think, now faces a fork in the road as to what it's going to do to handle things like this in the future. Unless F1 steps in and prevents the teams from naming them, themselves whatever they want based on whoever's paying them the most this could be a very lucrative move for visa cash app rb v car alpha tauri whatever they're called and if f1 doesn't change the rules this could be another very effective way for f1 teams to bring in that extra bit of cash what's to stop other teams exploring this option like everything else in f1 if something is successful it is copied by everyone else. And then before you know it, we're all waiting to see the Drive to Survive episode where they feature the MoneyGram, Paw Patrol, 
powered by Ferrari. And then what if Audi decides to pull the plug, leaving Sal behind and dry? They're already in dodgy territory with their stake rebrand, but yeah, no doubt they'll exploit this if this rule is left alone. And as costs go up and up, is F1 now in a position like in football where you have to sell the name of the stadium to raise some extra cash? If the name of the team is for sale, why not sell the name of your factory or your location as well? You could have McLaren operating out of the Chrome or Google Technology Center in Woking. I mentioned earlier about F1's development and evolution as a sport and as a commercial entity, but if this is the road that we're going to go down, it does look a little bit depressing, to be honest. I suppose the most annoying thing about the rebrand is that this was the best thing that they could come up with. F1 being the most innovative and creative sport in the world, and we're left with a name like this. What a great chance it was to merge together all the influences of Minardi and Toro Rosso and Alpha Tauri, throw a sprinkling of Italianness in there as well, but put it all together we could have had something really, really great. No, nope, they gave us a name that was crapped out at vast expense and has all the creative inspiration of a Soviet bus stop. We'll just have to wait and see how it turns out because as I said earlier, as long as the car is fast and the drivers are good, to some degree, it doesn't really matter what you name the team. Let's wait and see what they come up with at the livery launch. If the car looks fantastic and it's a great livery, then hopefully the name can be forgiven a little bit. So there we go. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please be sure to like, share and subscribe. More videos on the way soon. See you later.